So either you've been asked or volunteered to give a eulogy or a funeral speech for someone who's recently passed. First, we give you our condolences. We are very sorry for your loss. Now these can be heavy days with a lot to sort through. Properly honoring this person at their memorial service can be a daunting task. This video is to help guide you through the process of writing and delivering a successful eulogy that would make the person you are honoring so grateful. Our goal is to help reduce the anxiety of giving a eulogy. This guide is to help you give a eulogy based on the Bible chapter 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to give you a simple step-by-step -step process that will help relieve the stress of trying to figure it out, save you time, and help you deliver a successful eulogy that properly honors the person you are memorializing. We've even written the majority of your speech with options for you to personalize it, so it will make you sound like you wrote a custom eulogy for this person. To help you succeed, we're giving you a free worksheet and eulogy template to guide you so you can easily put it all together. Now, there's a lot of information in this video, and to help keep you organized, we've broken it up into these chapters. To help navigate, just click on each chapter in the notes below to get to the section you need. At 113 Forever, we are all about a certain chapter in the Bible known as 1 Corinthians 13. It's also known as the love chapter because of the importance and guidance it stresses about love. We believe that its words are just as relevant today as when it was written over 2,000 years ago. We also believe it will serve as an excellent foundation for the eulogy you are giving. My name is Michael Hemby, and I have given and seen many eulogies. This video shares the best practices of giving a eulogy. It will show you how to use 1 Corinthians 13 and other positive character traits outside of 1 Corinthians 13 to deliver a well-balanced and respectful eulogy that will properly honor the person you are eulogizing. Before we get started, let's take a look at what a eulogy is. A eulogy is a remembrance speech that pays tribute to someone who has died. It's often given at a funeral or a memorial service. The eulogy celebrates the life of the person you are honoring. It highlights their unique qualities, the importance they had in the lives of their loved ones, and their lasting impact on family and community. Most funerals include at least one eulogy, if not two or more. They are often given by someone who knew the person well, such as a close family member, friend, or colleague. A eulogy reflects on what was special about a person, how they impacted those around them, and how they will be remembered now that they're gone. The eulogy may include stories about the person, a list of their accomplishments and successes, their trials and tribulations and how they worked through them. It can tell how they helped other people and their communities they were involved with. It can tell about what they liked most, their favorite quotes, songs, books, movies, food, drinks, places to go, activities, or who they like to spend their time with. They also range in depth. A eulogy can be a simple overview of that person's life, or it can be a highly personal reflection that describes the speaker's relationship with the deceased. And it can be from the perspective of just one person or multiple people where one shares the memories and perspectives of others. Basically, it's the highlight reel of the person who is being remembered that day. And we are here to help you easily put it all together and successfully deliver. Your role is to lead the audience through the life story of the person you are honoring. I want you to think about how audiences think. Audiences understand and expect certain story structures. Just like an audience expects a comedy movie to be funny, a mystery to have a who did it, or a romance story to have people falling in, in and out of love, people have an expectation of how a eulogy flows. The audience for a eulogy you are giving know that you are going to take them on a journey to remember the person you are memorializing. They expect you to be like a commentator, guiding them through that person's life or an aspect of it and the good that they did. They also understand you probably will explain what it means to have lived a good life and show how the person you are memorializing lived a good life. And if you do these three things in your eulogy, 
you will have done a great job. First, you frame the game. You get to guide the audience to focus on what it means to have lived a good life. You remind the audience of the playing field, the boundaries, how to score, and how to succeed in life. Second, you showcase the lifelong highlights of the person you are honoring to show how they lived with the rules of the game you provided. Third, you summarize their virtues and positive character traits, which shows how that person succeeded in life. And trust us, it's easier than it sounds. And that's what your audience wants. And we are going to guide you through that journey. We are going to show you how easy it is and give you the tools you need so you can deliver a eulogy that family and friends will be so grateful that you did. So let's get started. We created two items that will help guide you through the process of writing the eulogy. First, a worksheet that will guide you through identifying the positive traits and stories about the person you are memorializing. The worksheet is where you organize your thoughts that you will use to build your speech. If you were baking a cake, the worksheet is like you getting all the ingredients to make that cake. And second, the eulogy speech template. The eulogy template puts it all together, kind of takes all those ingredients and turns it into a fancy cake like this. This eulogy template is your step-by-step -step guide for putting your speech together. It gives you an outline for your speech. It enables you to customize it for the person you are honoring. It has the majority of your speech already written for you. You just have to fill in the blanks. We wrote your opening, the body, or the main part of the speech, the transitions to help tie the sections together, the close, and the template even has the transitions to help you hand it off to the next speaker or give information to the audience about the rest of the ceremony or what happens after the ceremony. And it has a version of 1 Corinthians 13 that you or someone else will read at the service. For both the worksheet and template, we made a couple of versions of each using different file formats. Just select the format that works best for you to print or edit. The links to these are in the notes below. Just click on the ones that work best for you. Now, let's take a look at how we are going to use 1 Corinthians 13 for the eulogy. If you think about it, a eulogy, in a way, is a persuasion speech. You are persuading the audience to see what a good person you are honoring was. And a good persuasion speech usually follows a simple pattern. The speaker discusses a topic and their perspective. They use a credible source to validate their points of view and back it with evidence. Many effective speakers, when given a speech, will pull from famous literature or quotes to help persuade the audience. And if you think of a church service, the religious leader usually is discussing a topic and connects it to the reading that was read during the service. As we stated before, part of your role is to remind the audience of the playing field, the boundaries, how to score, and how to win in life. For that, you are going to use 1 Corinthians 13 to show how the person you are honoring that despite their challenges, their flaws and mistakes, won in life. 1 Corinthians 13 is full of phrases and insights about love that you will use to show what a wonderful person you are honoring was. It's often used at weddings as the couple is looking into the future. They are using 1 Corinthians 13 as a guide to serve as the foundation for how they envision their marriage to be. So while a wedding is looking forward, a eulogy takes a look back and highlights the good of that person. And we are going to use 1 Corinthians 13 as a benchmark to show how good they did in their life here on this earth. It's going to help you show how they won in life. So, during the memorial service, 1 Corinthians 13 will need to be read. It's a chapter that's about 275 words long and only takes about three minutes to read. Someone else can read it either before you give your eulogy or you can read it when you are presenting. We're going to show you where and how to present it. For this, we are going to use the very popular version of the Bible, New International Version, also known as NIV. If you want to see other Bible versions of 1 Corinthians 13, we created a booklet of the top versions and you can access it on our website, 113forever.com. The link to this booklet will be in the notes below. And this is how 1 Corinthians 13 reads. 
If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not envy. Does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The important part of 1 Corinthians 13 are verses 4 through 8 and 13. Six verses that give us these virtues or what we call the do's and don'ts of love. It includes these do's. Love is patient, kind. It always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. It rejoices with the truth. It never fails. And if you stack it against faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And it also has these don'ts. Love does not envy, delight in evil, or boast. It is not jealous, conceited, self-seeking, easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. This chapter in the Bible gives you plenty of material to work into your speech to showcase what a good person you are memorializing was. We are going to show you how. For this next section, we need you to access the worksheet. You probably have already been reflecting a lot on how special the person you were memorializing was. As you prepare your eulogy, you need to start identifying the traits that made them special. In the worksheet, we list the 1 Corinthians 13 virtues. Ask yourself, which of these virtues best fit the person you are honoring? Some questions to ponder could be, how are they an overall loving person? How were they patient, kind, protecting, trustful, hopeful? reliable or consistent with their love, truthful, humble, or how did their love never fail? Also look at how strong their moral compass was. How were they not envious, jealous, boastful, conceited, or angry? How did they not delight in evil or keep record of wrongs? And chances are you probably are coming up with some other positive traits outside of these 1 Corinthians 13 virtues. That's great. You do not have to be restricted to just using 1 Corinthians 13 traits. The person you are eulogizing might have been some of these traits too. We'll show you how to use those in the eulogy too. Ask yourself, are there any other traits you can think about of the person you are honoring? If so, write them down in the worksheet. Now that you think about the virtues and traits, we need to support that with some stories or antidotes about this person. Now, they can be your stories or they can be from others. The worksheet will help you through this process. For each virtue or traits you selected, 
First, write down how they were that virtue. Then start listing the stories that you could tell that best support that virtue or trait. This will help you organize the story you are presenting about the person you are honoring. Getting help from others. Let's take a quick time out from writing our observations and think about how we can get some help. Chances are you've been asked to give this eulogy or funeral speech because you knew that person well. But you only knew that person from your perspective. Most likely there are a lot of other friends, family members, or folks from their community who have a good observation or two about this person. You want to get some of those observations for two reasons. First, these people want to share the good of the person you are honoring. They have their memories, observation, and as part of their healing, they want to share. And two, it's going to help you writing the eulogy. Do not fall in the trap that you have to do this all by yourself. Yes, you have good memories, but with input from others, it will be easier for you to write and you will most likely create a better eulogy. Leverage the love others had for this person. Our suggestion is to send an email to those who are close to that person or post a message on social media for friends and family of that person to see that asks this simple message. I'm reaching out to get input from others to make sure I highlight all the good about them. Two questions. What were their positive traits? And two, do you have any stories that you would like to share that highlight the good of them? I will try to include your comments in my eulogy. And if on social media, please post here or send me a direct message. Thank you so much. This input from others will help you identify more traits and stories that you can use for your memorial. Take these insights and stories from others and determine what Corinthians 13 virtues they can be associated with. If you are slightly technically advanced, you can create a Google form or use a free survey platform like SurveyMonkey. Create a form and this will help centralize all the comments for you. In the notes below, we put links to videos on how to create a Google form or a SurveyMonkey form. We have found from our experience you will get a lot of good comments and stories. You might get a bad story or two, but remember, you are the speechwriter and you choose the best stories. You might get so many comments and stories that you won't be able to put it all into the eulogy. But you don't want to lose all those good memories. A nice gift to the family and friends is to take all those good comments and put them in a document and share it with the loved ones to keep all those observations and stories. So now that you have the virtues and traits identified with supporting observations and stories, you have the hardest part out of the way. The opportunity for you now is to take that content and start writing the eulogy. And we are going to use the eulogy template to do this. This is the template that you are going to fill out with all the work you did from the worksheet to make your speech. If you printed it, Take a pen and begin editing the template so that it's customized for you and the person you are honoring. Fill in the blank spaces and circle the options that fit best for you. If none of the options work, either come up with a new one or just skip it. If you didn't print it, just start editing in Word, Google Docs, or handwrite it. And I want to preface, use this as a guide. You can use it exactly as we've written it, or you can tweak it or make bigger edits. Do what is best for the eulogy you are giving. So let's take a look at this eulogy template. It's broken into five sections. First, the introduction. Two, the 1 Corinthians 13 reference. Three, honoring the person with traits and stories. The conclusion. And last, any kind of transition to the next speaker or next part of the ceremony or event. And now let's take a look at each. First, the introduction. The introduction is where you declare who you are and how you knew the person you are eulogizing. Chances are there will be people in the audience who don't know you or your relationship with the person you are honoring. This introduction helps you establish your credibility and sets the stage for the perspective you will be giving about that person. In this section, you state your relationship with the person, if not a relative, how you met, what type of role that person played in your life, how long you knew each other, any common interests or high-level descriptions of the things you did together, and a general statement of what you liked about the person you are honoring. This section is for you to help the audience get on the same page as you. 
The next section is where you begin to frame the game. You reference 1 Corinthians 13 as the guide and begin to showcase the virtues in this Bible chapter that you will weave into your speech. This template gives you two options. First, to reference it if someone already read 1 Corinthians 13 during the service, or to set the stage for you to read it. The third section is the heart of your eulogy. This is where you declare the positive traits of the person you are eulogizing and share appropriate stories. This template gives you an introduction that you can use multiple times for each trait and story. It also gives you the introduction for if someone else shared a story with you. And with the conclusion, you are almost there. This is where you wrap it up and end the eulogy. It's where you state how grateful you are to have been to honor the person you are eulogizing. It's where you summarize their positive traits and where you close it out with a request for all to remember the person, to remind everyone of all the love for that person and how much they will be missed. This then brings you to any transitions. In this section, you change roles. You are no longer the eulogist. You are now a guide for the ceremony, telling the audience what comes up next. It could be as simple as announcing the next speaker, or be more detailed like announcing that the ceremony has ended and what the following activities are, such as going to the ceremony or a special meal. And sometimes there are no transitions. We've seen many times where a person who gives the eulogy leaves the lectern and the next person follows. There is no right or wrong way. It's just good to make sure you coordinate this with the organizers and other speakers of the ceremony in advance to help avoid any confusion during the service. So once you've filled out the template, you need to spend some time editing it and just tightening it up to make it sound more like your speech. So as you put this all together, we've got one last bit of advice. Practice, practice, practice. And when you're done practicing, practice some more. The more comfortable you are with giving the eulogy, the more confident you will be in front of a larger audience. To hear how the 1 Corinthians 13 eulogy sounds in its complete version, I'll give you my version and we'll draw from my personal story to help make it real for you and maybe give me some healing. When I was growing up, my two-year-old sister Heather died in a drowning accident. I was only nine years old and had no concept of eulogy or even a funeral for that matter. My family was so blindsided and devastated by the situation, I, I can't even remember what happened at her memorial service. In all these years, I've thought about her so much, but I've never got to properly memorialize her. But this video is giving me the opportunity to honor my sister that I didn't get to grow up with by giving her a proper eulogy using this template. Hopefully this will help inspire you for the eulogy you are putting together. So here we go. Hello, I am Michael and I am the older brother of Heather's. Thank you all for being here today to honor her. She would have been so grateful to see all this love for her in one spot. Heather was a big part of my life. Although she was here for only a short period of time, her presence here had left a big impact on everyone she touched. Her loss has left us with a permanent void. So many reflections of what might have been have lived with us all these years since she passed. I always appreciated and remember Heather's constant zest for life. Even at such a young age, she was always her true self and lived in the moment. There was an ever-present smile and a consistent laugh. She also had a flair for pushing the boundaries. The reader did a wonderful job reading 1 Corinthians 13. That chapter from the Bible? is often referred to as the love chapter. 
It was selected for today's service because love is how we remember Heather. She gave so much love. And if we all look around this room, I think we would agree that the love Heather gave and received was plentiful. As we reflect on the life of Heather, there is a chapter from the Bible that I think will help us honor her. That chapter is 1 Corinthians 13. Many refer to it as the love chapter. It has served as a guide about love for many generations, and I think it's a good representation of the life Heather lived. She gave so much love, and if we all look around this room, I think we would agree that the love Heather gave and received was plentiful. I want to read it for you. There are so many sound virtues in this chapter, like love is patient, love is kind, it always protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres, rejoices with the truth, is forgiving, that love never fails, and that it is greater than faith and hope. It tells us that love does not tolerate evil or envy or like to boast. It reminds us that love is not jealous or conceited or easily angered. It's almost impossible to live up to all those virtues. But you know what? I think Heather lived up to those standards outlined in 1 Corinthians 13, even at such a young age. As a sibling, I saw how Heather touched my family's lives and did so much good. She gave so much love, and I, fortunately, was a recipient of that love. As I think about my time with her, I think of how she was kind, trustful, hopeful, strong, and loving. When it came to love, she was loving in so many ways, especially with our family. She and my other sister were so close. She loved her so much. They were inseparable. They were always playing together. She also loved her doll. She carried her doll with her often and gave that doll so much love. We remember how she would play and hug that doll. And there was often a lot of laughter as she played. In the house that we lived in, we lived on a quiet street with a backyard that was our own adventure land. And my dad built a jungle gym for us to play on. The jungle gym had swings and monkey bars, and the monkey bars were about seven feet off the ground. He also built these platforms around the jungle gym that would enable my sisters and their friends to climb up to the monkey bars. In the summers, my sister and I would often go in the backyard and play with each other or friends or just hang out by ourselves. When my sisters weren't playing with their dolls or toys, they were on the swings or attempting to cross those monkey bars. Now, our kitchen table was next to a window that faced the backyard, in direct view of that jungle gym. There would be times I'd be sitting down to have my breakfast and would look out the window and see Heather out on the jungle gym, stuck, holding onto a bar with both hands. She didn't have the strength to advance, and she didn't want to let go to fall in the sandbox below. I'd quickly put down my cereal and run out to help her. She was motivated. She was bound and determined to cross those monkey bars. And this happened more than a few times. There were also times that she would climb up on top of the jungle gym and would get stuck sitting on top of the bars. She would yell for someone to come and get her so she could get down. We were intrigued by her sense of independence and focus at such a young age to master those monkey bars. She would have needed another summer to fully master them. Another summer that we sadly never got. Growing up in the Midwest, one of our favorite activities was sledding. Our house had a little hill in the front yard, and we would often take our sleds to it. I remember how much Heather loved being outside with my sister and I going up and down the hill. We would laugh and try different ways to go down that hill with all three of us in one sled, or we would race, or we would put my sister's dolls in the sleds. As the winter afternoons grew late and colder, my mother would call us in for dinner. And Heather would negotiate with my mom, one more time, one more time. Sadly, Heather's life ended too early. Although she lived here for such a short time, her impact and memories will never be forgotten. It's been an honor to be part of Heather's life. 
Even in just the short period of time we were with her, she has given us a lifetime of inspiration. I am grateful for the opportunity to finally have a chance to remember her like this. I remember Heather as an adventurous, ambitious, calm, caring, charismatic, cheerful, cooperative, curious, confident, determined, humble, inquisitive, kind, motivated, trustworthy, strong, and loving person whose life was unfortunately cut too short. Heather, we are so grateful we had you in our lives for the short time you were here. We miss you so much. You lifted us up with your fearless embrace of life, adventure, and your desire to push the boundaries. Your love and kindness lives with us to this day. We love you, Heather. You will always be in our hearts. We hope that helped give you some inspiration and show you how a eulogy can sound with our structure and flow. Now we've covered a lot of ground in this video, and we're optimistic you should have enough to get started to deliver a good eulogy. If you haven't already, download the guide and template and start working on those to get started. If you need to, watch this video again in its entirety or focus on specific segments to get a better understanding of the process of writing a eulogy. Review the comments for this video too. As time goes on, we're hoping the comments section will serve as a helpful resource from others who have provided their feedback and suggestions. Check the comments to see if there is any additional advice to help guide you. We're cheering you on. You got this. Thank you for watching. We hope we've been able to provide you with some helpful guidance. And we'd like to hear from you. We want the comment section in this video to serve as a community to help others. In the comments below, please let us know how it went. We also welcome your questions, feedback, and suggestions. How did it go? Thanks again. We wish you, your family, and friends strength and peace during this challenging time and hope your loved one is memorialized and honored in a way that meets your satisfaction. We wish you, your family and friends, the best. Thank you very much.